You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. And it starts right now. Well, hello and welcome to The Kylo Show. We are still walking through our personal growth, learning. Process. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Our Series. system. Our yes. system of personal Marvel. growth. Marvel. We'll have to put together an e-course on this or something. Something. And I don't know that you'll be able to use any of the uh, Marvel characters, but. No, it's not even about that. It's just about how you'll be marveled at the end of uh, the application of this to your life. I just know that if you've been following my dad for as long as I've been alive, which is a while. You know, it's almost like. Don't even say that. <laughs> you can't say that. We don't say the F word <laughs> on the podcast. But he loves acronyms my whole life. You I have do. you have created Kylo show. The Kylo show. Kylo. The parenting was called Directing Vision Daily, which was DVD. DVD DVDs. DVD DVDs out of the DVDs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, IASIS. I don't even know what that stood that for. That wasn't that was a oh uh, it just looked like an acronym. That was a Hebrew that was a, gr- a Greek word for yeah. healing. Okay, yeah. well, Go there's one one yeah. word in yeah. a different language yeah. Yeah. that wasn't an acronym. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just, anytime we're doing anything, it's somehow trying to be formed into an acronym. Which just, always makes it happen. helps me remember. Is that why? Yeah. yeah. Well, just as funny. So here we are with Marvel. Lop. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? It's never ending. Okay. So just for the next generation coming, I probably will never do an acronym. Oh, well, have to eat those words. I'm just saying. <laughs> I have yet to do it, probably because I've got too many from you. <laughs> okay, well, guess what will be remembered? <laughs> All those acronyms. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> they tell us not to talk before we start the podcast, so weird stuff like this comes out. So, anyways, but back to Marvel. We're talking about vulnerability today. So we're kind of going through the the list. Should we review? Mm-hmm. You're kind of like the Kylo Five. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be stuck on okay, here forever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yes. Submission. Uh huh. The M. Uh, authenticity. Uh, last week was responsibility. Yes. So Mar, uh-huh. and then Vol. Right. <laughs> so we're at the we're at the beginning of the second half. Yes. Which I I thought that she took one away, but she added one. Oh yeah, yeah. You didn't have an E. I I didn't I didn't need an E because it's still t- all, all, The old does its work all by exactly. itself. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it makes sense. This acronym it just comes. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah. the. Uh, the editor is like, no, you have to make. We it gotta, forward. you gotta put an e in there. Yeah, it's good. a misspelled word. I got a, a red line <laughs> under. My, yeah, I no, can't do it. Wrong. Yeah. So thankful, we're thankful for her because now Marvel actually is spelled correctly. Mm-hmm. But today is vulnerability, mm-hmm. which um, is a, sometimes a really hard thing to do for people. Usually, is uh, usually it's it's. Uh, I used to just dis- dis- you know I would describe the interaction of a couple trying to communicate like an eyeball touching contest, <laughs> yes, you know, which is kind of vulnerability. It's right there. It's like, don't you hurt me. Don't mm-hmm. you hurt me. Yeah. Which is the whole working definition of vulnerability is I could be hurt. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. I always think about the, to love somebody also feels like I could get hurt. That's vulnerability. Exactly. Yeah. You're not doing it right. If you're not thinking like that. I could I could be hurt right now. I, this could be so painful. You could so hurt me right here. Yeah, and I mean it is. Uh, we we say we <laughs> when we, in our Kylo Five is you know, we're we're keeping our love on, which is we've got to live vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But then we also have boundaries. How to, I mean, it's such a a, a fun uh, twist to thinking. Oh, what well, if I keep my love on? I don't have boundaries, right? Right, or if I'm vulnerable, I'm not powerful. Uh huh. Like, oh no, no. It, part of part of being powerful is the vulnerability of what somebody else will think mm. or someone else will do when you manage yourself and you don't let them manage you. Yeah. 
that's often the the first struggle that people go through is how dare you manage yourself around me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I'll punish you. Where'd you go? Yeah. Uh, don't want to be very vulnerable with that. What about the, um, the? I've always heard you say, like, intimacy is into me, you see. Mm-hmm. Is that another expression of vulnerability? Very much so. Yeah, like letting a light in, mm-hmm. like stand there and be seen, which is really the, the process in vulnerability is going to be learning how to stand in the light with someone. Which sounds like having to tell them the truth, mm-hmm. which is, I'm hurting, I'm scared, um, I need help, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I failed. I mean, those are all really scary. Um, you know, I, I think about Ben and I, you know, obviously he's the most intimate relationship I have outside the Lord. And anytime, you know, when we've talked about, he talked about his journey with porn, but that coming into the light, even there, Mm -hmm. that level of vulnerability to show you, you know, his almost trying not to give the permission of shame to come in. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's what I remember seeing in those moments is he's trying to express that he's hurt me and he's scared to tell me and he's scared to, to let shame come in and, and standing in that light. I mean, or he's just showing you his shame. Sure. You know? Well, he, it's, it's he's, good. Yeah. He's living in it. And he's like, uh, <laughs> I thought I'd like to see if I can make this worse <laughs> and show it to you. Yeah. yeah. Which, yeah, that is the, I mean, uh, uh, those moments are really big moments of vulnerability, yeah. I think, in a marriage. I mean, yeah. there's lots of them, but that's that's when I know that we've walked through and, um, you know, there's... Sometimes I handled it really well, and sometimes I did not handle it really well because mm-hmm. I was scared of, and and it caused pain. So mm-hmm. I wanted to punish and c- keep distance. Mm-hmm. You know, all those things happen. Yeah, you get scared, you get hurt. Here we go. The, we got to we got to work this out. We got to stay in there. And this, you know, it it isn't necessarily uh, a long time. It can be though. Mm-hmm. It can be like stages that we keep working this out because classically we don't have character flaws that happen once <laughs> no <laughs> no one and done you know? no it's usually oh, you know, it's, it. i don't know what it is but usually there's a a, a momentum to them in our <laughs> lives before they ever get seen so, and then once the they snowball's get, already taken out yeah, the house yeah so. yeah it's oh. hard to slow this train down <laughs> next stop here we go (laughs) you're like oh my gosh and so it is a a a commitment it's a commitment to address adjust address adjust and and i usually describe vulnerability as the place where we behave trust Mm. it's it's the place where we behave truthing you know it's the place where we walk in the light Together we have fellowship with Jesus in the light, and we have fellowship with each other in the light. Mm -hmm. And that is, it's almost frowned upon. It's almost frowned upon to to walk in the light together Mm. as though it's some sort of disloyalty. Like if I mention that, you are less than perfect, and you're a leader. You're a spiritual leader. I am disloyal. Mm. If I mention that you as a husband or as a wife are less than perfect, I am assaulting our covenant. <laughs> you know, so, so there's just all this weird drama. Is that why there's all those... Uh, Towels that say she's right, always misses right. They don't. They don't want to ever tell the wife that she might be wrong. Well, maybe <laughs> I'm not sure who makes those towels, but um, I think that the the idea that telling the truth here's my experience of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you act like that, it scares me. When you act like that, it hurts me. When you act like that, I feel powerless. You know the the whole uh, yikes, ouch whoa, 
you know, if I could just train people to say those three <laughs> things, because so it's just so hard. I don't know how I feel. I don't know. Well, which one do you want to say? <laughs> which one of these three things do you want to say? Yikes, ouch, or whoa? Because that's identifying that you're scared, that you're hurt, that you feel powerless. And if we just begin to slide that out there, if I could think of an acronym <laughs> that would really kind of tie that together. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to hide myself. <laughs> then we'd probably all remember it better. But <laughs> but you can't th- think that fast, so we have to move on. Yeah, I have yeah. to keep, yeah. Uh, but I will, now I'm nope. going to spend some time. I'll spend a little time doing that. We I'll will not the, be continuing the segment. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll call it the Yao. <laughs> the Yao 3. No. Is on now. <laughs> Anyways, yikes, ow, oh, whatever we're trying to say. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yao. <laughs> Woy or Yao Willie something. And we'll, we'll call it. Taylor, edit all of this out. <laughs> uh, that you if if people would just learn to stand in the light, mm-hmm. say, see me, see me, and let me see you. Let, you know, tell me about you. Tell me what's going on when you act like that. Yeah. And then it helps me understand. Oh, you're not rejecting me you're afraid right now Mm -hmm. oh i thought you were rejecting me that's why i was acting like this but if i understand you're afraid i have a different response to you being afraid than you rejecting me Mm -hmm. you know so i i don't feel punished anymore i now feel compassion Mm -hmm. and that's that's the benefit of truth we start truth in each other, and we start exchanging the truth. The truth sets us free from the yeah. lies, really. Primarily, we're set free from the lies. Yeah. And then when we can move in the confidence of seeing each other, we have a much more accurate behavior with each other, sure. which is generally very helpful. Yeah. I think about, um, you know, in attempting to have a hard conversation where we stand in the, lo- in the light, tell the truth, and display vulnerability, there's got to be a probably a pretty significant level of connection to be able to reveal, especially if it's a hard conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that's a mistake that often happens is there's so much anxiety building in our relationship that I want to practice this. I want to do the, what I, you know, what people are learning and they hear these things are like, yes, that's what I want. I want health in my relationship. So, okay, we are disconnected and I'm going to be vulnerable and tell you the truth. It doesn't usually go very well. No. And usually people think I'm going to tell you the truth means (laughs) I'm going to tell you, (laughs) I'm going to judge your skin off (laughs) while you thank me later. It never happens. It never works. It never works. Like, here's what I think is wrong with you, and here's what I think you're doing wrong. Uh-huh. And that's not truth. That's judgment. Yeah. That's punishment. That's an attempt to control the narrative and the outcome and the human. Mm-hmm. And there's no vulnerability in me going off on you. No, it's just very defensive people that are going to be sitting there. Right. Yeah. I'm going to the worst me. Uh-huh. is scared. Yeah. And I'm now going to scare you and hurt you. So I'm scared and hurt and you're going to be scared and hurt and then we're just going to scare and hurt each other. Mm-hmm. Going oh. forward. Yeah. And then people say, "Oh, this doesn't work. I can't you can't handle the truth. <laughs> you can't <laughs> handle the truth." It's like, "No, it isn't the truth that I can't handle. It's the tearing my skin off. Mm-hmm. That's the piece that just really bothers." The judgment me. is I can't un- handle that. Yeah. So, so you tell me about you, and I'll tell you about me, mm-hmm. and you listen really well, I'll listen really well, and, and by the time we get through this, we're both going to learn so much that helped us adjust, like mm-hmm. maybe nothing we've ever done before. Yeah. But to have those conversations, there's got to be the same level of connection well, for... for it, it, a, a, an outcome that feels successful? Well, I think you can have this conversation in a disconnection. Mm-hmm. If you do this, you'll end up quite possibly with a connection and, and a deeper one. If you don't do the judgment thing. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if I don't so. tear your skin off, you're not scared of me as bad. <laughs> it's yeah. True. It's kind of a weird thing. <laughs> no, it's totally predictable. And, <clears throat> and people that, 
you know, I think this is one of the reasons why uh, self-awareness tools are so valuable Mm -hmm. is I learned truth about myself I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh. I feel that. I just never knew how to say that. I... I do enjoy that, and that's and I've always felt bad about that. I don't have to feel bad about it. that's my design, and so your truthing yourself mm-hmm. kind of brings you into the light and sets you free. And then when you afford somebody else the same, you can invite them, and that's why. How many people that do disc as couples mm-hmm. get a revelation? Oh, almost all of them, mm-hmm. unless they come in not wanting to learn or grow. Mm-hmm. or actually get reconnected, then mm-hmm. I can't do much about that. But those that are, I mean, the fun thing, you know, families that do it, that have older kids that are, they realize, you know, I had this family we were working with that they're all high CSs, and one of their children, the other two are this, are very similar to them, and their one child is a high ID mm-hmm. that is just, drowning mm. in this environment and and it was really revealing to the the, the parents like oh, we just saw him as a disruptor of what we thought was peace instead of looking at him as like oh there's something great that he could add to us but we've made no room for it we were trying to communicate to him that he's a family defect and it just wasn't working <laughs> And it, and I don't think any parent would ever say that that's their goal, but that's how their actions. They believe it. Yeah, they I, believe you have to change to be more like mm-hmm. us. So let us disciple you. I'm. I was just having a conversation with Delaney. She was in a really, really sad situation, really hurtful, and and but there's a a problem that needs to be solved. But she's in the pain of it, mm-hmm. and and I. I'm always so quick to go straight to the task of what needs to be fixed. Like that's my default mm-hmm. and I'm great at that. I struggle here. Mm. And but Ben was gone. I was on my own and I'm looking at this going What would Ben do? Stay present. <laughs> stay in this moment. Nurture her heart. It's not that I don't want to. It's just it's not I I want to fix a problem and I I want I usually can I can rush that process and she's wired so much more like Ben is so being willing to stay here and then we have this really beautiful exchange and she's super vulnerable with me and and you know letting me see her and all the things that were going on in her heart and I just stayed there we just stayed in that moment and you know thankfully it wasn't too long because I don't know how long Mm. I would have you know but I have a timer I'm like okay Okay, this is my this is what I'm doing right now. This is the task. And she then said, I need help with this. Can you help me? I'm like, this is where I can <laughs> help you here. Let me help you. I'm so good at this part. But that's, you know, the beauty of, you know, that self awareness piece that you were talking about and how much, you know, being aware of ourself and being able to bring that into our exchange and vulnerability. And so the, the vulnerability aspect brings us into this place of valuing feedback. Mm-hmm. You know, like, okay, I, I'm i realizing that I'm designed in such a way that I, I fit with the rest of the puzzle. Mm. I'm not the picture. Like so many people like to think, I'm the picture. <laughs> uh, let's adjust all the things in your picture mm-hmm. that need to be more like my picture. Yeah. So that I can surround myself with myself so my anxiety goes down because I don't really have to try to be around myself. Yeah. I actually love being around myself. I just surround myself with people who think and behave predictably the way I would. Like mm-hmm. this is fan- I unfortunately I didn't marry someone like that. I married someone <laughs> who the opposites Opposite. attract and yes. I can't believe how different they are and how they won't yield to my discipleship. Mm-hmm. So all those pieces are kind of swirling around us when I recognize I'm a puzzle piece. Mm. I fit in the overall puzzle and design of of our family, even our marriage, mm. but our family, our our society, you know, our church environment, our yeah. whatever community I plug into, I'm a puzzle piece. Mm-hmm. And 
as long as I recognize that, then I begin to see the value of your experience of me. Mm. And I see why I need to be courageous enough to communicate my experience of you, to protect our relationship, to walk in the truth together so that we can build trust. Yeah. And therein is the freedom. You know, ongoing, we've built trust in relationships. I've built trust in my marriage. I've built trust in my family. I've built trust in my community. In doing so, I'm free. I'm free to be myself, and you get to be you around me, and we all flourish together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know. Um, you know it, it's hard to receive feedback if, if it feels like um, the person giving it doesn't actually believe in you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to, to take that feedback as um, you're going to be with me in the process as I walk this out mm -hmm. and alongside of me. If so that's where I think feedback becomes so hard is that I if it's received by somebody that's not willing to be on the journey with you, you're like, well, I don't want to take this because I don't know that you're going to be patient with me to learn mm -hmm. or, or, or encourage me when I am making adjustments, mm -hmm. however big or small they may be. Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's the part where, you know, the person giving feedback has to be willing to kind of walk out the process with mm -hmm. the other person. And realize that when I compare my strengths to your weakness, you're going to lose 100% of the time. Yes. And this is parenting. You know, like parents are like, hey, be responsible. Mm -hmm. you know, take out the trash. <laughs> I, I, how, you know how responsible I am? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, you're 70. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that, okay, well, it took me a little while, but, you know, I need you to get on board. <clears throat> that... Uh, temptation to compare my strength to other people's weaknesses kind of demonstrates that I'm not aware. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing and how I'm treating another person. So that that's where I need feedback of your experience when I compare my strength to your weaknesses. Yeah. Like how does it feel? Ah, it feels it feels hurtful mm -hmm. and it feels scary. I'm scared that you're going to reject me after you judge me. Yeah. And I'm 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 very scared of that. Like okay, and I feel powerless. So I want to say yikes, ouch, whoa. <laughs> all go. in one <laughs> acronym. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I love the uh the spin of you know, vulnerability and feedback and and feeling believed in, you know, all part of the a process of understanding how what it can produce in um and and really the talking telling the truth and not bringing judgment mm -hmm. that's a probably big thing to be thinking about as we're mm -hmm. moving towards yeah getting it, healthy it uh and feedback obviously isn't all i'm having a problem with you yeah but maybe we should start putting it together and you know, feedback and affirmation or something. But there has to be there has to be uh, the the nourishing aspect mm -hmm. of of my comfort with both. Because otherwise, I just sound upset and critical all the time. Mm -hmm. Like the only time that you want to be intimate with me is when you're upset. Yeah. And I don't mean intimate in the most <laughs> you know happy way. I mean intimate like, oh, let's walk in the light together, <laughs> so I can point out what's wrong with you. Like, I don't want to do that, mm -hmm. you know? There, so there has to be the balance of, of I really love this about you. I really mm -hmm. value. I, mm -hmm. I so enjoy when you do this or you, when we experience this together or that moment that, that we had. I really enjoyed you. Mm -hmm. There has to be enough of that to where we realize that we are dinging the, the, you know, the bell and... Like, okay, we're, we're being successful and we have to grow and we have mm -hmm. to adjust. Ben and I talk about this a lot with couples that we work with in, you know, chasing after love languages. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times um, there's knowledge of the spouse's love language, but there's not very good execution of that. So mm -hmm. the, the message, I love you, gets lost, right? Mm -hmm. So they get lots of feedback of you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to keep doing anything if they're doing it wrong. Oh. And so we're 
trying to encourage people, give the feedback of when they're successful. Because that, that feedback of success gives courage to try again. Yeah, I'm watching you learn the piano. <laughs> you know, and uh, I mean, just imagine if you had to learn to p- play the piano and there was no sound. No, oh, I, w- I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Nobody would do it. Nobody would do it. You know, and only the only time the sound came out was when you messed it up. Oh, gosh. So definitely would not do it. You wouldn't do it. So it's do it. all that feedback that you're getting because you're, you're nailing those that you're like, this sounds like the song I'm trying to play right <laughs> here. This is awesome. <laughs> that is what keeps you in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, you know, I think when you get to stand in the truth and be vulnerable and have both of those experiences, um, it, it just helps us to keep growing and mm-hmm. to, to achieve um, the marvel that will we want in personal responsibility. Boom. Look at all our all, all our vulnerabilities paying off here. Yeah. So good. And it helps us to build partners. Yeah. And I think that, you know, uh, again, we just had Giving Tuesday not very long ago, and, and a lot of partners gave to Loving on Purpose, and it is um, really encouraging and really yeah. fun. I, I think the other thing that happens is we get lots of testimonies or prayer requests or just um, stories of of people that have been transformed, whether it's from Keep Your Love On or the Kylo Show um, or the parenting. So, I mean, there's so many different ways that I, I'm, I'm discovering that people find us mm-hmm. and, um, and then have chosen to partner with us and really grateful for it. And so really thank you for showing up in our, in our world and, and doing your part. Um, it's great feedback for us, mm-hmm. you know, to realize that, you know, somebody – like a lot of folks are willing to commit to $25 a month and end up in our Kylo community online community that we're doing together. Mm -hmm. It's a healthy place where like-minded people are getting together, sharing uh, thoughts and needs and getting some really great regular input besides just this podcast. I I think uh, the last one or one of the last ones I, I saw that we do these monthly calls with the Kylo community is, you know, there's a lot of vulnerability that was on display yeah. and, and you kind of doing a coaching session with these people. So fun. And, um, you know, I think even when people call in and, and give a testimony, there's, that's an, a, a place of vulnerability that they're willing to share with everyone that's, uh, listens to the show. So yeah. really grateful. And, um, if you're not a partner, but want to be a partner, go ahead and check out uh, lovingonpurpose.com and there's a donate button. I think it's in the right-hand corner if I'm remembering our website. That's what we were instructed by the web designers <laughs> would be the most effective place to put <laughs> okay. that button. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, we're going to jump into questions and testimony and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, well, we're going to jump into our uh, question. Which, if you want to send us a question, you should do that. You go to kyloshow.com, and there you get to actually record your question, mm-hmm. and which is super fun. I love I love being able to actually hear the voices. I wish maybe someday we'll have a live where you can call in and we can have a dialogue back and forth. But I know that until then, that would be so fun. Until then, we've got this is our option. So please give us questions. Always fun. But today's question comes to us from Patrick. Hello, Danny and Brittany from uh, Patrick here down in Australia again. Hey, I love when you guys answer our questions and uh, they really bring a lot of insight and a lot of gems of wisdom. But uh, oftentimes the questions are pretty heavy and deal with a lot of um, you know deep stuff. I want to give you guys a lighthearted question today. What is the soundtrack to Kylo? What kind of music? Do you guys like, and you don't get any points for saying Bethel or Jesus culture, (laughs) what are the songs or the music or whatever that help you, Kylo, keep your love on? (laughs) Thanks, guys. The music that helps us, Kylo, is probably always worship music because Kylo, I'm normally uh, flustered probably if I'm trying to Kylo. Mm -hmm. (laughs) powerful mm. <laughs> but um yeah I, I mean there's 
I have a couple worship playlists that are all sorts of mm-hmm. people, not just Bethel or, or Jesus Culture, though. I, I love a lot of those guys, but there's so many really great um, artists coming out, um, and, and the songs, they're fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, if, if I'm being honest and I'm in a conflict, I'm usually pulling on heaven to come control my freaking self mm-hmm. and calm mm-hmm. down. Um, so, I mean, if I'm trying to Kylo in a, in a conflict, that's usually what that looks like. Mm. But if I'm having fun and... Wearing your cowboy hat. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I do love country. That is, uh, I will, uh, I never thought those words would come out of my mouth, if I'm being completely honest. I know. Anna's uh, <clears throat> cheering right now silently in the corner. I know. I know. But, yeah, I, w- I used to listen to just pop whatever was on, popular or whatever, and then it just felt like it got worse and worse and worse. Maybe I just got older and older, and I was like, what? I don't, what? I'm not singing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ben started listening to it first. And then I think Chris Stapleton is what I first started listening to, which I do love Chris Stapleton. Mm. I like Morgan Wallen as well. I mean, I like, I remember listening to Garth Brooks in uh, Vicky's car when we drive down to gymnastics with Ashley from Weaverville to Reading. So mm. I've been, country's been in my, in my mind <laughs> since I was a child. I just didn't choose to listen to it until more recently. <laughs> But. Yep, I I don't not like country. I just don't like it enough to listen to it, you know. So <laughs> I don't understand how that statement makes any sense. Of you. I mean, I I don't know anybody that you just listed. I mean, I've heard of Chris Stapleton, T- Templeton, Stapleton, Stapleton, Stapleton. He's like, um, I mean, he he looks like a grizzly bear man out of the middle of nowhere in Tennessee. That's what he looks like. Is he the Tennessee whiskey guy? Uh Oh, okay. I I like that song. He's, he's great. Yeah. He's, he's, he's he's kind of folk sounding and country more than like pop country, which is more Morgan Wallen, I would say. Okay. But. Yeah, I guess, uh, I'm kind of stuck in the eighties probably Mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so but I don't really listen to music to keep my love on. I can't think of a time that I, maybe if I'm drowning, I'm like, okay, That's what I, I'm saying, Lord like, Jesus, <laughs> come help me. I, I know. Um, but typically, I I listen to music to entertain myself. You know, yeah. I can, but I can drive for hours with no noise. We were driving somewhere. The thunder of my car, <laughs> which I actually do love. That that's probably how I keep my love on right there. <laughs> Is listen to so if I could get some kind of combination of ZZ Top and uh, some other classic rock band and a Corvette engine, if I could blend those together, you need more cowbell but Corvette engine. I don't know, yeah, just yeah. less cowbell, but uh, you know, Creedence Clearwater Revival. That's what I remember uh, in Mount Shasta. I don't know why that. That's because I had your mom got me this little box of tapes oh. cassettes and and i'm the kind of guy like it i would make a mixtape <laughs> or a cd like a mixed cd and i would play it in my car every time i turn the car on it just came on uh-huh. for three years <laughs> same one See, that's like ben ben can same listen one. to this like um, I, I have no time to fuss with my music your brother your brother <laughs> our editor he's going to hear this right the second he gets in my car he is Adjusting my music. Well, second he gets to the house. <laughs> he, if anyone is in charge of music when Tay's around, it's Taylor. Did I he... think I had Glenn Kaiser in my CD for years. Yeah. Every time I got in the car. I don't even know who Glenn Cly- Kaiser is. Uh, trouble, trouble. Oh, yes. I know who he is. <laughs> That's what Dustin would sing when he would... Yes. My cousin who was a little that lived with us which he was a wild little boy and he loved that song right like, uh, yeah you should not sing this song <laughs> trouble was, trouble is your middle that name was child. my middle name <laughs> yeah there was a you know, the whole that whole thing i i mean i haven't listened to glenn kaiser because i've had something else on there for mm-hmm. three years you know yeah well i don't i i i recently found all of our cds but that i don't know how to play them because I don't have a CD player. Hmm. I, I mean, 
the kids, I, I just say we, we had this reel that came out on our social media and it said, um, one of the songs says, call me maybe or something like that, you know, and I put my hand, you know, with my pinky and my thumb out, you know, yeah, and like to a, my, like a phone, like a phone, yeah. how I grew mm-hmm. up. And I'm watching this, this reel and Lincoln has his hand flat and is pushing on it and puts his whole palm to his head. There you I was, go. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yes, we we're, we're evolving. We are totally evolving. <laughs> Addie and Lainey still did this. And I was like, this is hilarious. I don't, this is going to die. Lincoln's generation is going to yes. be how we do things. So it's funny. Well, mm. random question. That Patrick. is Rhett Patrick. That was pretty random. So I guess now everyone knows a little bit about us. I, yeah. You're you're always been a little bit more rock. You and mom are rock and roll. I know. I I just have been entertained by it. You know, like I, I don't <laughs> sing it. I don't. I never catch myself singing the lyrics to some no. stupid. You are because they're are, all just horrible. Most of them are just banging terrible. on things like yeah, ben, I, drumming. And I can play it really low. Mm-hmm. It'd be playing in the background of a restaurant, and I'm just I'm you just, are I'm moving my body, and your mom's <laughs> looking at me. What are you doing? I go. Do you not hear like, that? Oh, she, didn't, she didn't even hear the song. I'm like, oh, this is my favorite I part. I have witnessed right this many times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's funny. Well, um, yeah, I don't know any other random questions that we could answer that go along with Patrick's question. No, we're good. But we could definitely move on to the testimony. We should just do that. Awesome. Let's All do right. it. All right, our testimony comes to us today from Grace. Hello, Kylo team, Brittany and Danny. This is Grace Buchanan. I want to thank you for all your efforts to share what you've learned with the rest of us. The Kylo community online has been helping me. Life Academy has been helping me. I started out with uh, Margaret Nagib on overcoming overwhelm and joined the online community. What's getting through to me is that Jesus is not about punishment. Something was imparted to my spirit when Danny shared that when the woman caught in adultery was brought to Jesus, he said, yes, you caught her, let the one with no sin throw the first stone. And then he's, after they all left because they all had sin, he said to the woman, where are your accusers? And she said, nowhere, Lord. And uh, they, the woman, he said to the woman, neither do I condemn you. You know, John three seventeen says, Jesus did not come to judge the world, to condemn the world, but to save the world. And bit by bit, course by course, Kylo show by Kylo show, it's penetrating to my heart that I don't need to get up in the morning because I'm afraid of punishment. I can get up in the morning because I want to change the world. I want, there are things I actually want to live for. And I've been in 12 step for codependency and compulsive eating. And one thing Danny said that impacted me is people don't change, but because they're told to give up something. They change because they see something better. And your vision for the love of God is giving me something better to want to live for. So I get up in the morning and think, I want to, I want to be a world changer. I want to enjoy my life. I want to receive the abundant life Jesus died to give me instead of um, the shame-based life that I grew up with. So thanks for everything. God bless you all. Bye. Wow. Yeah. That that sounds like what a transforming life looks like. Yeah, I just thinking about kind of the Marvel breakdown, you know, she's she's discovering a mission for mm-hmm. herself. Mm-hmm. You know, which is going to lead her to feeling like she gets to be authentically herself, mm-hmm. who God's created her to be, and and really restore the the broken mindset of, I should be punished, I should be looking for punishment. Mm-hmm. 
um, you know, and, and taking the ownership and personal responsibility of, okay, I'm, I'm going to go and do now the things that I'm discovering and not live bound in fear. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, and Grace is in the Kyla community, Mm -hmm. you know, she's showing up in there and on our calls. I I think she was one of the ones that we just did some coaching with on the call. And it, it, uh, it never gets old listening to people go from punishment paradigm to connected, loved Mm -hmm. daughter, son paradigm. And how much more we will do for love that we would never do for, for fear. Totally. You know, you can't scare me into what I would do for free in love. Yeah. yeah. And you can threaten me all day long and all you'll get out of me is my self-preservation and survival stuff. So you manipulate me with that and I'll manipulate you with this mm-hmm. and we'll just try to survive that relationship versus nothing could stop me from the commitment and sacrifice that I have because I love you. Nothing. Death can't stop me. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, those people right there, those people we want to surround ourselves with. Yeah. It's beautiful how, um, you know, when that revelation hits, the passion that can come from someone, Mm -hmm. you know, knowing that their design is to receive from the Father, and then go and give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's where all those climb the highest mountains, swim the widest sea, you know, uh, dig the deepest hole. I'm not sure what else. (laughs) Uh, That's where all those songs come from. Mm -hmm. It's it's trying to express this level of devotion that I have Mm -hmm. because love's propelling me, not Mm -hmm. self-preservation. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal. Thanks, Grace, for... Amazing. Yeah. Grace. Amazing. Oh, Oh, you did it. But she is, she's, you know, she's discovering how amazing she is. Yeah. And I I think that's an incredibly powerful thing. So thanks so much for sharing that with us, Grace. And thanks for encouraging the, the listeners that we have to, you know, to confront some lies that maybe have been deeply rooted but you are you've you're you're taking hold of your garden and you're you're going to actually plant what you want in there and mm-hmm. i think you're going to have a beautiful harvest build a tomorrow you want to live in that's it mm-hmm. that's it awesome well thank you so much for joining us on the kyla show uh we look forward to seeing you guys next time thanks for listening Never miss an episode of The Kylo Show by subscribing to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the Loving on Purpose YouTube channel. Don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to thekyloshow.com. The Kylo Show is produced by Ali Armading, co-produced by Ashley Beck and Anna Hill, sound engineer and edited by Taylor Silk, and show promoter Christian Zamora. Don't forget, whole healthy families, gonna save the world. <laughs>